What up traders, what up investors? Thank you for coming out for another fantastic live stream. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. We have a smorgasbord of stocks making all time highs. Of course, I'm pretty sure everyone has seen uh, the complete run in Tesla. Uh, we have a combination of just the Bitcoin hitting that 9,000 or 39 to 40,000 price target that we had put out uh, with a Fibonacci retracement number there. Um, as of right now, we're looking at uh, the S&P 500 only up about 14 points, NASDAQ up about 37, uh, the RUT, aka the Russells, about 12, um, and so forth. The VIX down a little bit, but nothing too much, and then we got the, the Dow basically up 94. Uh, so a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, thank you guys for coming out and uh, definitely supporting the live stream. It really does mean a lot. So let's go ahead and just get, a, get some fun going here and start looking at some charts here. So we're going to be looking at um basically the overall of just the strength of the market or the breadth of the market as they call it um with that being said we're looking here currently at the s p 500 um we have a very key target at 3827 um for the fibonacci for a fibonacci retracement that's a pretty significant level and we'll see on if we do get a bounce off of that it's going to be uh um what is that uh 27 about uh 26 points sorry a 12 that was that 15 16 points higher where we currently sit uh so there's nothing too substantial that we're talking about less than uh, half a percent where we're currently looking on uh, we could see that substantial move up from there um, to really hit that wall. I'm kind of looking at a smaller time frame. You can kind of see here the past two days have been super green, even though um, the the stuff that we had issues here and uh, somewhat in my backyard in DC uh, with the Capitol being raided, we still had uh, a fairly really strong recovery, I believe, uh, from that and have really seen uh, these increased prices, even with that drop off we just saw a couple of days ago, basically coming out uh, the following beginning of the week, uh, the first day of trading and really kind of sinking down from there. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out. I got crashing soon. Thank you, Fib. Thank you. Um, Mag, thank you very much. GGG Investor, what's up? Blackhawk says, what's up? And Kelly D, good evening to you as well, my friend. Um, yeah, just sit tight. There's going to be quite a few things we're going to be talking about. As of right now, um, the markets are still um, in after hours trading, still still trying to continue to go higher here. Um, what's up? What's up, investor? G G G G. Um, Triple G. Uh, Wesley, how you doing, my friend? Thank you for coming out. Just wanted to look at this. Like, look, look, look at this. This is the the Russell two thousand, aka like the small caps. This is where like your regional banks, oil suppliers, and like the more smaller mid cap stocks of the U.S. equity uh, is. You've really seen the past three days just really come out. Oh, this is not a straight lineup, but it's pretty much pretty straight. Like, we can kind of calculate on this line here from here to here. We're looking at a 46 to 47 degree angle that we're currently seeing climbing uh, the past couple of days. So this is a pretty aggressive move in the market. Not saying it's going to come crashing down, but it's something to be well aware of. Um, so with the Russell, we are we it has been somewhat of a lagger behind the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq, but we've really seen uh, a huge uh, come out here and really seeing the uh, rut really catch up and actually gain a lot of steam over the last coming weeks. Um, and a key target for the Russell 2000 is around 2100, uh, 2188 is going to be key level. So that's going to be a little bit ways away. You can see here on the top level of the RSI and the volumes on oscillator, it has been fairly a toppy kind of pattern, uh, but it's been toppy for a while because we've seen it continue to hold the five and eight moving averages and just continue, continue to grind higher there. So that's just going to be continuous uh, things we need to look at on the trend. So the trend is still trying to kick higher. Um, we did see a potential trying of a break of the 21 EMA. Again, if you watch the channel for more than five minutes, we know that you we love the 21 and 34 EMA on the daily charts, uh, and those really kind of help us uh, sort out the potential trend in which way the particular stocks would be 
trending doesn't mean it's going to have to go that way just more or less to kind of uh, be its potential uh, uh, lease of uh, the path of least resistance in the sense of where the stock could be trading of course earnings and other things could gain a scope on it but yeah yeah wesley tesla holy moly guacamole amazing right Um, after our markets closed at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So they closed about an hour ago. But these are the futures, GGG Investor. They, where you're looking at the futures here. <clears throat> so these don't close until Friday at 4.15. And then they open up again on Sunday at 6. These are all Eastern Standard Time. What's next? I wish I... Yeah, exactly. It's kind of a... Uh, uh, I don't want to say clickbaity, but in the sense of like, I think anyone knows, we don't know what's next because I don't think anyone knows what's next for anything. So that's kind of a, the, the parameters around that. Um, Ty says, good evening. Have you reviewed SQ? If not, can you take a look? Uh, what is your targets up? Thanks. Yeah, let's look at SQ. I guess SQ has made a very strong recovery that we saw just a couple, like basically a week ago. Yeah. Um, so in the short term, it's, it's still, the trend's still going higher. You can continuously see uh, the market right now um, with the square. What's it look like? It looks like a beautiful staircase higher uh, to the up right-hand corner. And what's really uh, seen some extreme lows, we've seen it break the 34, come through the 50, but it bounces right back. Uh, just last week, we came down to touch the 34. Um, we did close below the 21, um, but that still uh, strong support at that 34 EMA really gave that bounce back um, um, and looking at that with that holding the 21 EMA here, potentially trying to kick higher here. Um, some key potential levels that we're looking at is this previous high here, basically for square. If we can get a break above that, we could easily run to uh, 250. It would be the next uh, nice round number. Um, it's definitely something to look out for. Um, this is somewhat of a cup. Um, so it, it could be a, a the cup pattern is actually a very strong pattern in the technical trading textbook. Um, but this is something that can kind of just uh, a cup pattern would kind of come down here, make a cup, and it, it could just blast off past 250, or it can build a handle and it can just kind of go a little bit lower, but it can't go lower than this base. Basically, just trade sideways for a little bit, and then you get that breakout. Uh, yeah. You can kind of see that somewhat here with this kind of cup here, somewhat of a handle, and then slowly kicks higher. Usually, sometimes you get a huge boost of momentum and FOMO kicking into it um, and really gets it boosting higher. With this, especially with Square, you're seeing a really strong consistent uptrend here even if we switch to the weekly chart like look at that beautiful look, look at that beauty that's a that is a beautiful looking chart holding that 21 ema on the weekly side and it's continue continue to grind higher so it looks uh very 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 nice actually i need to get uh, my memes up and hopefully those work properly where's my very nice and there we go high five now we can do high five there we go nice i like that chart um, all right, what we got next? Um, uh, let's see here. Wesley, nice, <laughs> awesome. That's that's a high five for you as well. Let's get the, let's get a get you a nice little uh, thumbs up for that for the Tesla up one hundred and sixty eight percent. Awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Min says Tesla to. 840 next yeah so tesla we talked about tesla just previously in a video um we had a key level basically at 863 dollars um meaning that hey these are fibonacci retracements uh the really key level that we talked about in the video was basically the 800 level and that basically has come and gone <laughs> to be a lack of a better words and now we're seeing the huge move higher here in tesla um again no one knows when it's going to come back down or correct or whatever or it's just going to trade sideways or just continue going higher to a million i don't know um but speaking of statistics we are somewhat on high high higher elevated prices currently um and just being a little bit waving the flag of concern of like hey hold on like don't don't start 
uh, putting a down payment on a Lambo yet. Um, looking for this potential to, again, not come crashing down, but stocks, no matter what the meme is, stocks don't always go up. Again, with like we just looked at Square, Tesla is a beautiful looking chart that has a beautiful uptrend and it's continue, continue to go higher here. Um, but pullbacks and small corrections are set in place. So just be wary, wary of that. Um, we have a stronger on the short term side, basically around 695 to 675. The reason the ranges are so wide um, because of Tesla is a very volatile stock. Like this stock can easily move $35 in a day on average. That's pretty insane. So just keep that in mind. Like it's, we're not talking about like uh, uh, Kroger's uh, grocery store. We're talking about Tesla here. This thing can move substantially in a very short period of time. If Elon tweets something or something comes out from Elon pissing off the SEC or whatever uh, can come out and it can definitely make the stock move up or down if they decide to break a window on their new brand new truck it can break the stock dough down um and so forth but that being said we have to be very well aware of where the prices lie and if you're a longer term investor you're basically probably don't want to look at it because the market moves in this stock is definitely somewhat sickening um but yeah looking for basically 863 is the next fib and then around a thousand to 1080 is going to be the next fib from there my friend and then at the end that downward support basically stronger support is going to come all the way down to 560. i know that seems insane but if the overall market takes a correction uh tesla can easily uh, pull back substantially because there is a lot of volume coming in here just the past uh, uh moves here but it, it has been somewhat stabilized we're not seeing that huge uh, uh inflow of volume because again a lot of it is uh, uh potentially increasing in people's fomo about it <laughs> ken trades on four i don't yeah dmc i don't not use weeble no 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 um uh, I'm just talking stocks, GG Investor. Ken, have you ever want, bought wheat stocks before? Yeah, I just le recently bought some. Uh, um, I actually, I think I got out of them, actually, because they, they, they went up so much the other day. They blew up my expectations. Hey, Ken, TSM earnings Thursday might grab a weekly calls. TSM's really next to Specs Thursday? I didn't even know. I didn't even look that far ahead. So I love TSM. That's one of my fantastic holdings here. Again, this thing has been absolutely skyrocketing up another 5% today. Like, holy moly guacamole. Like, this is insane. Um, I'm a little concerned uh, just because, again, earnings are is coming up. Uh, uh, we have had a very large move in the market um, into earnings. This could be an earnings run. Excuse me. That being said, um, I, I'm not usually a fan. Uh, this is like statistically speaking, um, a run into earnings doesn't mean it's going to continue to run up the earnings. It, it's basically something that can kind of to whittle out because uh, the expected moves already set in place. Who, who knows? Like that's why I'm, if you're playing shorter dated calls or you have a shorter shorter dated investment idea. Um, into earnings is never really a good fun thing to do because um, especially if you have you have calls and they're expiring let's just say this week or, or the next week uh, if they're not in the money or in and around that target price and the and the, the earnings goes against you you basically kiss your whole investment goodbye so you play super small size or you don't play it at all But with TSM, um, we're looking for 130. That's some key targets. I don't know why that went away for my target up there. I have to constantly raise every day my 21 EMA line here for my alert. Um, basically, short term supports, if it does pull back, is 112 and then down to 107. So we can look at uh, the expected move for next week is basically, uh, let's just call it eight bucks. So eight bucks we're currently looking at could be coming back down to one, that 115, which kind of puts it around that eight EMA. So be very mindful out that there. Um, ABUS is the parents that is murder. ABUS, let's look at ABUS investor. Oops. 
Hmm. Um, very much a choppy chart. Um, you said it's a, it's a biopharmacal company. Yeah. So these are going to be very choppy markets. It's going to usually earnings or any kind of data really move this market. Um, that being said, um, we are getting a very short term pattern here. If we do get any kind of follow through um, with the purple and white line, again, the five and eight to cross through the 21 EMA, we could potentially see a target around 450. But if that doesn't go through, we can easily some come it back down to around that 320 ish level. Kelly D, what's up, my friend? You're asking about LMDA lemonade, right? Ba -do -ba -do. Whoa, how the flip? <laughs> oh, wow. What a move, eh? What a move that we, ha we had a Fibonacci retracement target at 128 here. Um, basically looking for a potential breakout. This is a insane amount of volume. Like what happened here? What was announced here? That's insane. That's a, that's crazy. What did that come like midday or something? When did that happen? Oh, it came right out of the gates. Wow. A little bit after lunchtime. Wow. Holy moly guacamole. Um, yeah, that's a straight, that's a very, very aggressive looking chart here. Really broke out of that pattern here. Broke above that 128, 130 with huge amount of volume coming in today. Um, looking for potentially consolidation. Um, again, since this was uh, overhead uh, resistance, now this comes downward support. Uh, and the next real level we're going to be looking at is 180. It's going to be the next FIB tree they're going to be looking at for those targets there. But yeah, that is a a very aggressive chart. If you're in that, Kelly, and you got that 30% uh, today, get yourself a round of applause and a little pat on the back. Um, Kona Trent, can we take a look at P Lug? Yes, Plug was a beautiful little surprise here. Um, that was my 30% gainer today. Uh, well, a little bit more, 35%. Um, really coming out strong here, getting that investment from a South Korean uh, uh, capital firm and really just pumping it higher here. Some key levels, we're looking for 50 to $52 to be the next overhead lines of resistance. Um, but that being said, this thing has shown really strong support around the 21 EMA. So if it does kind of pull back or any kind of reason, the next uh, uh, short-term support is going to be coming at 36. Um, since it has made such a large gap up from all the moving averages, normally this will slightly level off or maybe come back down because all the folks who got into this or bought into this today hoping for it to fly up to a thousand or whatever they thought um, that could potentially shake out some hands there. Um, GGG Investor says TSNP. Oh, wow. Um, that's a penny stock, honestly, GGG Investor. And it's usually not my wheelhouse for these. Um, this is like considered like, um, it looks somewhat okay. Like it, it's a holding that 15 cents range if you're looking straight at the chart. Um, but you have to be very mindful of these penny stocks. They are very, very... Uh, spontaneous and completely random um, and somewhat easily manipulated at times. So no really comment on that, my friend. Um, Tony says FTFT. Wow. Okay. That's a, I hope you're in this one. You're got nice 242% today. Uh, really not much to say about this one as well, due to the fact of it just has shot up on some kind of news. <laughs> like that's fantastic. And, I'm I'm happy for you that you got that. Uh, Victor's DJ goes go go go. I don't know what you talking about. Ticker symbol G O G O, the airline uh, Wi-Fi company. Um, Robes G says C T R M. Let's look at that one. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. Have I done this one before? No, uh, yeah, I can't. That look, let's look at that chart. I know there's a lot of volume picking up in this, and this can ride, but uh, th th again, these are a lot of penny stocks, folks. I'm not really into the the old pennies. Let's 
What's up? What's up, my friend? Thank you for coming out. Uh, breakout. Uh, NIO is going rocket. NIO is going rocket. Yeah. When does they? When do they have their uh, NIO day? Is that soon? Very, very interesting to see. Yeah, NIO, uh, of course, the uh, the Tesla of China um, has their flagship annual conference kind of thing happening. Um, we have this uh, for a nice potential breakout if it does get above 57. Um, if it does get above 57, we'll be looking for 62 to $68. Uh, a very, very aggressive move potentially to see uh, with NIO there. Um, some downward support, short term is gonna be around 50, and then some stronger data support is gonna be around 45. So be very much uh, uh, aware of that. Uh, because th that definitely uh, definitely could move quite a bit on depending on when their NIO day is. I'm honestly not too much uh, uh, up to date with their dates. Um, David and Junior saying it's Saturday. Okay, so the, so a lot of people will be placing their bets for probably the January fifteenth um, monthly expiration. So beware of that. Uh, Sydney Hay says BBBV. Why, please? <sighs> yeah, those. BBY, somewhat of a earnings miss. Again, I didn't read through the conference calls, but um, overall, the chart is actually showing very much resilience. It actually really ran up into earnings, so um, that's always I'm a little bit afraid of. Again, we kind of talked about that with uh, TSM, um, and now seeing this potentially with BBY, of course, they had earnings. Um, really, previous earnings, I think people were expecting this whole, like, uh, two deviation to move, but we kind of hit the bottom here and potentially went down to that 1779 level, which has been a Fibonacci retracement before. And we hit that pretty much to the T here, uh, not breaking through the parabolic SER dots. I'm usually not a fan of just going out the day after uh, earnings and just buying up the stock or, st or options or something like that. Um, maybe potentially selling some premium, aka selling like the 16 to 1450 put if they have that um being a little bit strategic about it um that would something that i would potentially do in my wheelhouse but the only thing is uh the implied volatility is so low now because the earnings has already been out so be very mindful of that as well um but this being said if it does hold above 1780 that looks fairly fine that we could see uh just a bottom and base building at this level maybe getting that momentum to try to get back up to that 2167 uh, which we've seen multiple times of being hit uh and not really being able to break out from that recently in recent history Um, I got the plug 44 call expiring 115 yesterday before the close. Would you recommend selling when it hits 50? Um, if you got the $44 call yesterday, you were making money, my friend. What if you just had one of those? You had the $44 call? Really? God bless you. Because you're going to be up. Yeah, you're you're up nearly 18, 19,000 percent. So <laughs> you probably bought that for what, like 15, 10 cents or something like that? Not even five or 10 cents. Wow, that's insane. Good for you. Um, would I would I sell it at 50 um, when it hits 50? I don't know if it's going to hit 50, but it's it's it is really strong and is continue to go an after hours market. Um, it's up to you. What was your trading plan? I don't think you ex expected the stock to go this high this fast, but 50 to 52 is really the next level that we're seeing here on the Fibonacci tree to potentially be some overhead resistance. So just be mindful of that. Um, can we look, Tony says SKLZ, that's the one um, my lady bought, uh, Kathy Wood. Um, so this one, that, again, be very well aware of what's going on here. Like there's a lot of folks that scrape and just get, look at the data that uh, uh, ARC puts out. Again, they're very transparent, very uh, uh, upfront on what they're doing and their research and just sharing and being open source about it. Um, this one, of course, was 
uh, somewhat uh, coming out of left field. Um, we are seeing that trend kind of continue holding above the 21 to 34 EMA and really trying to uh, grind higher here. If we do get a break uh, really above this overhead resistance here around 23, we're going to put this alert here, we could get a potential slight move higher. Um, and that slight move higher, let me do this fib here for you real fast. Do, 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 do. Oh, what am I doing here? Fib. Potentially, yeah, the, if it breaks above 23, we could see some the, the previous high and then potentially hitting 28. What would be the next overhead line of resistance there? What's up, Trevor? What's up, Ken? I got March 45 puts on NIO. IV should spike tomorrow, but I think NIO Day will buy the rumor and sell the news event. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to touch with the 10-foot pole just because uh, it's just a little bit too risky and it's not in my wheelhouse and not my uh, it's not my cup of tea or my cup of coffee and it's not my kind of bagel and it's also not my kind of Danish. Um, uh, it's not how I like my eggs in the morning, if you know what I mean. Um, with that, uh, NIO is very risky. It's, it's. I don't know how else to say it. Like you have to have pretty much of a hard stomach or balls of steel um, to really deal with the just the fear of the United States government uh, uh, smacking uh, them off the exchange or things like that. It could literally be something so simple like that. The company has to do nothing wrong. It could be an outside source that could really uh, ruin the ride for NIO. So be careful out there. Um, someone's saying Apple may partner with NIO, but it seems more likely to be Volkswagen and JC Motors. Um, yeah, I, again, those, those are rumors. Um, I don't know uh, someone's saying. You said some saying. Uh, again, that's the, there hasn't been anything uh, justifying that. Um, Wesley says BA must hit the 2.5 billion fine. What are the thoughts on that? BA just got hit with a 2.5 billion fine. That's what's your thoughts? I didn't know they got fined. <laughs> um, let's see what the stock's doing though. Stock looks like it's doing pretty fine here. Um, it is running into earnings, so be mindful of that. Uh, being a, a large component of the basically the number one uh, person or uh, company that does create airline uh, uh, airplanes for the airline companies. Um, with that being said, currently uh, the trend's a little choppy choppy because we did get the five and eight kind of crossing through the 21 EMA. We did have a bounce off here, the uh, the 200 EMA and the 50 kind of around 200. Nice round number there. Um, potentially if this bounce doesn't hold, we can come back down to 200 or two, uh, sorry, 201 to 200. But if we do get the five and eight kind of leveling off here, maybe build somewhat of a base here around that 213, 215 range and maybe see a potential earnings run get up to 225. But again, you know pretty much with uh, earnings as well, that's uh, pretty much a coin flip in earnings. So basically you really could be potentially looking at if you're looking at buying some options um, for the NI or for uh, BA is there as well. Um, FDX, what's your next support? What do you have for long-term options? Um, yeah, FDX, that's the FedEx, right? So they have earnings, they just had earnings, yeah. I'm a little careful on this one. Uh, I think a lot of people got ahead of this one because they're like, oh, it's gonna be, everyone's gonna be shipping boxes um, for Christmas and FedEx is gonna be able to uh, deliver all those boxes and make a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. That being said, I don't, I don't believe in that methodology. Um, initially, this is a very much a drastic downward trend, my friend, because um, you, again, you're seeing the five and eight, the 21 EMA really continuously push its way down um, and potentially looking for some initial initial support around three, uh, sorry, 237 to 235. That could be somewhat of stopping the bleeding here. Um, we are seeing some aggressive volume coming in here as well. So when you start seeing these large like red candles like this, that's never a really good sign. You kind of want a candle that's somewhat kind of like looking like a hammer like this on downward uh, trending days to kind of show like, hey, the exhaustion has ended um, and the bleeding has stopped. Um, but with this, this looks like it wants to continue going down and being very mindful of that. So be careful out there on that one.
Um, DMC8282, it says FCEI. FCEI. What is that one? Are you talking about F cell? What is F? Uh, what's what is that one? Um, haven't heard of that about that one. Yeah, Hyundai is in talks with uh, Hyundai. Uh, but, but Apple's in talks with Hyundai. Uh, good for them. Um, good deal. That makes makes sense. INDX Porpoise. <laughs> yeah, this one. This one is an interesting one. This thing has been. This has been a runner before, um, and you can see here, like it had a huge run higher, another huge run higher, and it looks like we are in another spin here, potentially looking for the next overhead level of resistance or overhead uh, resistance at $3.30. You see here in aftermarket, it got up to like 320 ish Let's go look at a smaller time frame. Yeah, 320 has got to its high. Um, initially looking for 330 and potentially even to $4. Um, but this thing has run in the past all the way up to $4.84. So be very mindful. This is to be very much news uh, driven and very much FOMO and day trading me mentalics there. Mental, mental, not metallic, uh, metrics there. Uh, methodology and the sense of seeing this potentially go out higher. Um, again, on the, on the stair steps down, we're gonna be looking for some initial support around 277, 239, two dollars, and then back down to a dollar fifty six. So be careful on that one and put your hard hat on. Um, Doc Nee says a draft a kings DNG. Oh yeah, this one's been also choppy here. This is the one that kind of goes back into like, hey, this thing has just been bouncing around between that $47 to $53 and just the past coming month and a half, it just hasn't really seen much of anything going through its uh, uh, veins here. Um, and just kind of bouncing around here, really looking if it does get and stay above 53 and breaks up the 55, we could see some a potential larger breakout. But to the downside, we have that still that support around 47 because we do see the 21, uh, the five and eight potentially trying to breach over the 21, which could get enough oomph to get above 52 to $53. But then we could potentially run out of steam there um, and really kind of roll over. But yeah, be very careful with that one as well because that has definitely been trading in a range there. Uh, can we look at WBA? It's a good buy. Okay, let's take a look at WBA, what is that's uh Walgreens, right? Yeah. Walgreens, Walgreens, Walgreens. Wow, wow, wow. Holy moly. Yeah, nice moves here. This is very much a breakout here above $44. This is looking fairly strong here. Um, I have to look at this on a longer data chart just to kind of look on the weekly side. Um, this thing has been beaten up for years, okay? This thing has been beaten up for years. We're finally seeing that break, trying to get a back above the 200 EMA. I believe this is somewhat uh, a really strong bias here and a really strong base here that we could see that potential higher movement and really stay above above that 41 to $42 range to really get uh, it, this back into shape uh, and get this ship back on the road, if you know what I mean. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see here. Uh, Greg B says, Roku, yes, holy moly. Talk about the thing that everyone made fun of. Roku is like, oh, why would you buy a Roku? You can just buy, that's just the middleman, da 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 but holy moly, this thing has been really breaking out. Again, a lot of these stocks have kind of come out to the same pattern here, really uh, um, looking at this movement here, um, potentially bouncing off the 21 EMA here, um, which again, which we, we love to follow that trend here and really bounce higher to above that uh, 368, which was a key Fibonacci level in really breaking out. Um, some key levels to look out for now, since we've reached these insane levels, I actually have to redo these fibs here and look at the potential targets. But if this new high wants to stand, we're gonna be looking at, really would like to rather see a pullback, but the next level is gonna be basically try to break above 400 um, in the next like sequence of trying to get back uh, so not back, it's going to be all-time highs as of today uh, to, to really get to that momentum to break through 400. Um, but to the downside, you can see that 21 EMA, which is around the 330 level, has held a fairly strong. S says, hey, Ken, sorry, just logged in. Not sure if you've already done it, but TSLA. Yep, yeah, we can look at Tesla without a doubt. Yeah, does, does Walgreens have a decent dividend? Let's 
see here. Oh my gosh, my chat just updated way to the bottom. I'm sorry, guys. Um, what was the what was I looking at? Oh yeah, Tesla. Uh, Tesla, I can't, yeah, all making all times high here. Um, this is definitely something to be very well aware of. Again, this thing has been completely a rocket ship here. I think everyone can say and agree that, hey, Tesla is literally leaving this planet and is going to the moon. Um, with this movement, um, I'm a little cautious here, um, just in the fact of how much we've, how fast and how, how fast and how, fast, yeah, how fast and how far we've gone so far, um, and really, I won't say concerned, but looking for the next overhead resistance at around eight hundred and sixty-three dollars. I know this seems insane amounts, but that's really what we're looking for for the next target on the Fibonacci tree if we're really going to follow that sequence. Um, but that being said, be very careful out there with Tesla. Uh, I wouldn't be buying everything I have right now. Yeah, DMC eighty two eighty two, my friend. Look, I, 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 uh, DDD was on my piece of paper here. Um, I know if Ariel's watching, he's 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 uh he's gonna send me a picture or a, a message on WhatsApp and telling me to hang up a picture on my wall. Um, yeah, DD was absolutely crazy. I, I yeah, that's the one I I missed that one. Um, RJ, yeah, I, I think the, the next after that uh, eight sixty three, that a thousand dollar is going to be the next looming thing. Like, um, I'm very very careful with what I say right now, just because I'm not going to say it's going to go parabolic, but. Tesla has a mind of its own, so be very careful out there. Um, but, but, sorry, the ch chats, a lot of people are logging in now. Guys, thanks for showing up and gals. Um, let's see here. Um, Eddie says net. Yeah, um, so I actually talked to another good friend of mine, Dave. Um, he asked me to look at net for him. And uh, it looks very interesting. Like uh, I like this really strong rebound that he actually hinted to, told me about around seventy dollars here. Um, been somewhat beaten up here, really kind of lagging the overall market. Um, if it does get a nice another move higher into tomorrow, basically looking to kind of break above eighty to eighty-one dollars to really get uh, back into the groove of things and really get that five and eight moving averages back uh, above here and really seeing this trend kind of kick higher here. Hey Jared, what's up, my friend? Um, do we recommend putting a put a putting a stop loss on Tesla for my current prices? So that's all going to come down to how you want to trade Tesla. Um, basically, that being said, um, you want to be what's the word um, cognizant of what you're trading and really have a like. I don't write out exactly what I'm going to do, but I put out alerts and I, I put out uh, not aggressive stop losses, but I put, I have a plan each time I go into a trade. So I'm like, Hey, if Tesla hits a thousand, I'm selling 10% that, that I have that in, I have that in my head. Like I, if Tesla hits a thousand, I'm selling 10% of my holdings. I have to, like, it just, it just a, a smart thing to do. Like if that's, if it hits that Fibonacci number at 10,080, I'll take off 10%. Like just just have to have that that ability to to really uh, keep yourself to that plan and really put in where are you willing to for Tesla to go? Are you ready for Tesla to eventually go down to $500 again? Like will you be afraid for that to happen or excited to potentially buy more? Like it's all depending on what what kind of binoculars are you looking through? What kind of uh, uh, periscope are you looking through to really play Tesla? Um, yes, DMC8282, I hope NNDM gets a huge uh, F and bid as well. Um, this would be fantastic. It's honestly, uh, if folks don't know, I love NNDM here as well. Been in it for quite some time. I had my initial position around $3 and kind of built into it over time here, really holding that 21 EMA. 
Um, and I think, I don't think Ariel's on. I have to thank him and Dave for that. I'm really looking for, again, these alerts always go off here. Looking, if it breaks back above like this 930 to 950 range, the real target initially we're looking for around is 1142 and potentially $16. Like this is gonna be pretty astronomical, astronomical amount of prices if we do get aggressive moves higher again. I honestly believe, I believe in the technology. I think a lot of people, folks are saying it's overpriced, overvalued, but I think uh, uh, the folks over there uh, in NNDM are really working on some magical stuff. And I think uh, some people just don't quite understand on how they're 3D printing. They're not just making a little trinkets out of the 3D printers. They're literally printing circuit boards that basically most people can figure out and do. So that's their secret sauce. Uh, big C, yeah, Big C, how, what did that do today? Oh, I finally got a bid, nice. It's up 10%, nice. It, I was a little concerned that this was really just kind of leveling off here. We talked about it on, I think, the Sunday live stream, potentially if it did continue 50 would be the next downside support, but it looks like that's kind of holding here. That's a very strong move here. I really want to see it kind of really test back up 68 to $70. Uh, to really get back above into groove here because again that has been a very much of aggressive downward movement here and really wanted to kind of have the tide change here and really potentially see higher so we could get somewhat of a dead cap bounce but it needs to start getting back above 68 and stay above that lena says gnog yeah gnog is uh it's been an interesting one ever since the uh the SPAC, when it went from SPAC into merging online here, um, basically looking for this one to try to recover here. It has not been able to really get back above the 21 EMA, which is around the 21 to $22 range. It has not, it has continuously kind of hit that uh, yellow line, AKA the 21 EMA, and continuously, continuously have pulled back. Um, we do have the five and eight crossing through the 21 EMA, so this could be uh, some potential further downside to, again, that 1878, which can be our first initial support. And we do have the 50 day still kind of crawling up here, so that could kind of give it some relief if we do get a uh, little bit of a flush lower there. Um, doo -boo -doo -boo. Blue, what's up, my friend? You want to look at Airbnb? Yes. Um, yeah, Airbnb, interesting play. I actually, that's actually, thank you for bringing this one up. I actually like this one. Um, let's looking, let me look at this real fast. If this pulls up to the 618 right here, I'm going to be very impressed. Look at that. How did I know that? Just looking at the charts, this is exactly hitting that 618 at 154. Um, if it breaks it past this line here, I think it could easily run to 167 if that momentum continues. Um, for that momentum to continue, we need to really see the 5 and 8 cross through the 21 EMA and really kind of uh, crank higher here. Let's actually look at this at a 4-hour chart since it's somewhat of a newer uh, stock here. We can really see this play out here. Um, so if you remember the, the ticker symbol Rocket, uh, Rocket Mortgages, I believe the company is, um, they sell, again, mortgages. Uh, it's hence and it's in the name. Um, but with Airbnb, we're seeing that kind of same kind of pattern. It, it, it kind of got sold off, shot higher, traded lower, and potentially got another shot higher. So if we do see a break above 154, 155, we can easily see uh, 167. But we do have substantially strong support around 148 um, and a little bit of stronger support around 141 to the downside. So just be very well aware of that um, and looking at that on how that would it could affect uh, your trading strategy. Yeah, Drew, a, a big C. I'm actually gonna write that down. I, that's, I actually own that for a little bit um, on the way down, but it hit some. Uh, I just needed the capital for other things, and I it was on the on on. It was honestly on the short list, and I just kind of got rid of it. Um, which I think the printing company, what people are not talking about, is DM, which is the one that I've been looking at at Desktop Metals. 
So this is one that has been very strong as well. Um, it has been somewhat of a lagger behind a lot of these other ones and really need to see it break above $21 to really potentially test back up to 25. Because again, this whole 3D printing at very complex CAV files is really somewhat of the future. And I think it's uh, really seeing it's uh, uh, maybe third win now with through the 3D printing space that I've heard uh, in my lifetime. So yeah. I like this one as well. And I have a little bit, I have a tiny bit position in this one. I uh, wish I had more like I normally do, but yeah, I'm happy that to be in this one as well. Uh, Millennial Investor says GHVI. Oh, Earl, I didn't, I'm sorry, I missed Earl. Let me do Earl first, then I'll do, uh, Earl says Q-U-O-T. What is this? How did you, wait a minute. Maybe this is not the one. There was an interesting one that I saw, it started with a Q Earl um, that had a fan, this is beautiful looking chart. My only concern is, is look at this topping pattern here around $10. Um, like this is a little, a little concerning here. Um, and really seeing this, uh, uh, being careful here because uh, we've seen it basically once, twice, maybe three times above $10 and just kind of sells off. So that's going to be the next really concern there. So just be mindful of that. Uh, there's not really much to add on that one as well. Um, G -H -G -G -H -I -V. Yeah, this one, I think I own this one too. Drink some water. Yeah, this one kind of been a little bit aggressive here too is again this believe is a spec too yeah yeah i remember this one um coming down to the 21 ema here kind of bouncing around here technically speaking we're really just looking for the 21 ema to kind of hold this the trend higher here in millennial xxx -X -X or xx -X, sorry is asking for jmia i haven't looked at that one for a minute let's look at that one Interesting, interesting. Yeah, kind of broke uh, again. It held the 34 EMA somewhat here, and it's now trying to kind of break back above $40 range um, and maybe test the $50 range. But as long as this, the 21 EMA uh, kind of holds the support here and see the five and eight kind of start curling back up, um, we could get that back on the trend, but it looks like it wants to maybe potentially take a break, maybe come down to 34 a couple more times or even 31, but try to, uh, if we do get it some more momentum, because again, on the volume zone oscillator and RSI, it is trying to uh, get pepped up, but again, being up 13% today really did help, but it did really hit a wall here around 39 to $40 though. Um, bu, 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 bu. who's George? Did I miss it? Can you check out F U B O? Uh, yes, F U B O. Yeah, so this is when we talked about, I believe, on Sunday. Um, uh, we talked about it potentially holding above 25. We're seeing that kind of come into fruition on uh, the past couple days here. We are seeing the five and eight uh, moving averages kind of level off here as well, um, potentially looking to trade sideways around 30. Um, if we do get a break above 32 to 35, we kind of get that upward trend uh, continuously to go higher from there. And I want to thank GG Investor and uh, Jared for helping me get George. I do apologize. The chat moves so fast, so uh, sometimes it's, uh, very difficult to see everyone's uh, comment go out. And of course, the ones that are highlighted are the, the members, so it's easier to see. What's up, Johnny Bravo? What's up, what's up? Thank you for coming out. Um, open door, please. Yeah, that's ticker symbol Owen. Yep, I love open door. 
Uh, this is definitely looking to potentially try to break about above 29 to 30. Um, a little bit concerned here because this has been somewhat of a, uh, a line of resistance as well here. Um, really looking for this to potentially to break out. Of course, I'm a longer term shareholder in this stock, so I wanted to go higher, but um, there is no real indication of this really wanting to go higher it's instead of just this momentum and these candles really trying to print higher um, and maybe potentially break above those parabolic SAR dots around $29. Um, Wesley, what's up, my friend? It says LMNT. Oh, yes. LM, so that's Lockheed, right? Yeah, Lockheed Martin. Ooh, this one's been really choppy. Holy moly guacamole. Wow. This thing has had a hell of an issues of getting above 400. Wow, um, a very aggressive downtrend here. Wow, I wonder if, the, is this due to the election? This has to be due to the election because if they elect a Democrat, quote unquote, statistically, they, they spend less on uh, national security, which Lockheed Martin is, Lockheed, BA, Northrop Grumman are large contract holders for the US government. Um, with that being said, very aggressive downward pattern. I'm a little skeptical on this one. Uh, honestly, Wesley, I'll be straight with you, my friend. Um, looking for earnings coming out on the 26th. We got a little bit of ways away, but you, I think you can see this too. Like the 21 EMA, 34 EMA, even the 50 day are kind of pointing to the ground. So this is, you have to be very careful. Maybe size into this one. Don't, don't throw your whole account into this right away. Um, maybe, um, if it gets down to, it looks like it wants to potentially hit 340, even down to 330. Um, what's the earnings for this one? They have, what was it? What did I say? The 26th, the 26th. So we're looking towards the end of the month options. <clears throat> so that is basically a move of $20. So yeah, that could potentially grind down lower to this next fib here around uh, $333. So be very mindful of that and be careful. Uh, and this is definitely a very much of a downward trending market. George, I'm, I really apologize that I missed you. I really, uh, I don't do this stuff on purpose. Again, I am dyslexic, so I do miss things. The, the chat goes by so fast. Uh, let's see here. Um, Um, Johnny Bravo is asking for CLDR. Yes, CLDR. This thing has been really trying to break above $14. And thank you for bringing this to my attention as well. I think I wanted to get into, I think I have something on this. Let me look at my account. If I don't pull it up to the wrong page. Yeah, I did. Shoot. Um, I have to do this real fast. One second. I don't want to disconnect. You're going to see my pretty face here. La 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 I had my position tabs open. I don't mind sharing my positions. I just don't mind like sharing on the money amounts on them. I just I'm a little bit uh, a little weird about that. Uh, I don't want people to judge me on what I'm buying or trading into. So that's the reason why I was um, a little skeptical on that. Um, but, um, what was the position? CLDR? Let me alphabetical ties. Yep. I have that one. I have a bunch of May 21 call. It's our May, uh, 21st, uh, 1750 calls, uh, that I bought quite a ways back and I got a nice position in that one. Um, let's go back to this one here. Yeah, so CLDR um, really was looking for this Fibonacci retracement around 1675 to be met. Um, those calls were bought basically uh, way back here on this little upward trend here. We're looking for a slowly grind. That's why I bought them out all the way in May and really seeing that potentially to come into fruition there. Um, with that being said, this is really making a really strong pattern. It's still holding above the 21 EMA, staying up, trying to back above 14 and really looking for just an explosion in volume or in the RSI to completely take it higher here to break above its previous high, basically above 15, which I'm going to put that alert there and support there. So hopefully that was helpful there, my friend. Uh, BNGO, I didn't know who's going to ask about that one. Uh, so BNGO, 
Oh, yeah, this one has been uh, a wonderful little ride for a lot of folks. Um, we talked about this a couple times here. I uh, did a couple of shorts uh, videos on the YouTube. Um, really looking for this one. Uh, we had some targets around eight dollars and sixty eight cents. Uh, never hasn't been met there. Got up to seven twenty four. We talked about some short term support coming in around four thirty four and then five forty six. Kind of still in that same range here. Um, short dated support to the downside is around four dollars and thirty four cents. If that breaks, we can really get below four dollars and getting down to three fifty. Um, but that upward trend, if it wants to continue, again, I think you know this, Georgia. Hopefully, this is a very very aggressive momentum stock. Um, so there's a lot of uh, uh, again, just look at the volume here. Uh, compared to last year and then today there's a lot of new traders in here and there could be a lot of weak hands if we do get a pullback on a daily basis that a lot of people could just uh, be scared and just sell their shares and just uh, really put fuel on the fire uh, if it does really go downward. Um, let's see here. Ken, uh, more work on think or swim this weekend. Um, yeah, I can, I can do some more work, like kind of, you want to do more like option stuff or trading? What do you want to do? Mm hmm. How long do you hold options until I'm happy to sell them or get rid of them? I normally buy options. I don't buy very short-term options. I, I don't buy weekly options. Most of my options trading I do are on a monthly cycle, so they're at least 30 to 45 days out. Um, please do your CRM. Yeah, CRM, uh, of course, they bought Slack, uh, which which was a ticker symbol work. Uh, with that being said, this thing has just been beaten up uh, the last coming week or so and has not really participated in the rally that we saw just recently. Um, looking for some initial support around, again, that 215 to 216, which is again 200 EMA. So that's kind of where we're sitting at right now. So this is something that I could potentially entice on uh, selling some premium on here, maybe selling some puts. Um, but that being said, we still have the five and eight uh, moving averages kind of aggressively pointing down. Rather want to see this kind of trade sideways for a little bit um, around that 215 to 216 range and maybe build that base to maybe get that momentum to really kick higher from those prices. Uh, and then we're going to be looking at basically uh, like the 223 to 225 potentially if we get a break above that. Looks like someone threw paint on the wall. Um, that's just my my daughter's artwork. Do 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 do. Do a video on indicators. Yeah, I can do something on indicators. It looks like other people are asking about that. Maybe do like a webinar or something on that, or a live stream. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Let thing. If we all bought, if we all just bought Tesla, why wouldn't we worry about the stock? <laughs> Tesla. Yeah, everyone just needs to own Tesla. Everyone, right? Let's just buy Tesla and you'd be happy. It solves all the world's problems. Um. N O U. Uh, NOU is not popping up on mine. It must be something out of there. Rob says R O M. Is it R R M O? Sorry. Woo. Um, not sure what this one is, but it looks like a SPAC that was a bat out of hell and now it's kind of coming back down. Um, really potentially coming into a buy zone if we stay above that 19 to around 1950 to 19-ish dollar level. Um, so that could be, again, I'm not familiar with this company at all, um, but on the chart side, um, the five and eight are looking to potentially start curling, um, AK kind of leveling off here and potentially seeing uh, uh, some support being built here and a nice little uh, uh, way to kind of leap off higher here. Um, 
if you all bought Tesla, what did we do? Can we go over SQ and Etsy? So we did SQ earlier. Uh, so SQ has been a really nice little rebound here. If we do get a break above 240, we can easily see potentially test 250, um, but that we do have some overhead resistance from its previous high around 241 to 243. To the downside in the short term, 228, and then stronger support around 221 to 215. Um, and then Etsy, yeah, I haven't looked at that one in a while, maybe in the two days. Um, yeah, this one, I think a lot of people play this one because of a, it was like uh, the Christmas rally, the Santa Claus rally, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one has really moved higher and it, it was kind of a, a, a lockdown uh, uh, pandemic one as well because it allowed people to make cash and basically allowed to people to order gifts and other various things for their loved ones. But now it's kind of selling off here a little bit, uh, looking for some initial support around 166 to 165. If again, really want to be looking for, to build a base here, and if we get some kind of momentum, I don't see earnings on the horizon, so not to worry about that quite yet. Um, but looking for this maybe to try to come back again because it has been somewhat lagging again. I think it, it's uh, maybe just needs to take a little bit of a break here. We'll see how that one plays out. Um, but, 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 um, the one, what's up, my friend? What up, Ken? Long time no see. Glad to see the view count is up. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, my friend. Yep. Yeah. Again, I think uh, you remember when we were just doing it with five or ten people in here. Now we have 50, 60 people. Um, QS. Uh, yes. Quantum Scape. What are we going to do with this sucker? This one has been an interesting one without a doubt. Um, with this one, we've seen the probably the not the largest bull run here, but a very large run higher here. Um, hit the all time high around 132.53, came swinging back down. Um, looks like it wanted to bounce off the 50 day. Wanted, was expecting to probably potentially go down to 45. Um, but it really didn't get down to that level. Um, then got a nice little boost higher. We still have the five and eight moving averages trying to cross through the 21 EMA. Um, so be mindful of that. And we did get somewhat of a resistance at 70 to $72. Again, um, being somewhat of a, a, a dead cat bounce here and potentially a bear trap. Um, so if we don't get a chance to break above that $70 level, we can come back down to 50 to 52. And if we break below that and close below those previous levels, we could see some further downside, like we talked about to 40 to $45. Yeah, Uber did get clipped. What the hell happened to Uber? They have another scandal going on over there? Um, yeah, this one is, I'm pretty long Uber as well. Um, I've been long it for quite some time. Um, basically since back here, really looked at it as a recovery play. With that being said, I'm not seeing any kind of news or anything related to Uber right now, but yeah, if you look in after our trading right now, we're basically back where we gave back everything that we had today, um, really looking to trade below $53. Um, with that being said, who knows what's going on this? Was this just uh, uh, an issue with what's so face someone put in the wrong order? I don't know. It could be multiple different things, but it really sold off pretty hard in after hours trading. Um, that being said, um, looking for it to hold and stay above 52.24 and even up to, if it stays above 50 to $49, the trend for me is still continuously up. So um, we'll see on how it plays out tomorrow. Again, I can't predict the future. I just have to wait for the market gods to play my way. Sell your Bitcoin now. <laughs> I don't own the Bitcoin. Uh, uh, 
Um, it says we did FUBO. Let's look at Wayfair. What is Wayfair? I haven't looked at W forever. Um, looking at this one, yeah, it's not my favorite looking stock. It look, showing some kind of support around 225 and trying to really kind of recover from here and potentially get the five and eight to cross to the 21 EMA to get back above the 260. But we do have a lot of overhead resistance around, around the 278 level, which we've seen some previous uh, uh, um, targets and overhead uh, resistance there. Um, uh, let's see here. Okay, chat's moving. So, let's see here. Amazon, what caused the sell off today? I have no idea. Um, I didn't even know Amazon sold off today. What do you mean by selling off? Um, is it down like an after hours or something? Oh, it was just like the end of the day. Okay, so it just sold off a couple points towards the end of the day. Yeah, it's, it was still up for the day. Like, it, it just, it's all about perspective. Like, I'm looking, most of my charts are at a daily chart. Um, I don't, I barely look at the hourly chart here. Um, like, if I look at the daily chart, I, everything looks fine. <laughs> it just looks like it hit that 21 EMA here on the daily chart and just really pulled back lower, um, which again, kind of comes into around that, 3200 level but i got amazon on the super long-term horizon so it can go back to below 3000 and i'll still be fine um that trend is still trying to kick higher here along the 21 ema um i'm really looking for a really tight consolidation around that 33,000 to 3,300 um, and really looking for longer term stuff to potentially break above 4,000 in the in the longer run I'm but I'm playing it long term though um s r p t Okay, um, interesting. I like the setup. It kind of bounced off the 34. We're on the $163 level, looking potentially to test a 175. Yeah, this looks like it wants to try to break out. It has a pretty exhausted candle here, um, but really looking for this to really get back uh, and get above 175. Um, the moving averages and everything are really showing it. it. Looks like some substantial news or something came out today and really has uh, got some folks interested in the stock without a doubt there. Um, solo, I haven't heard that one in forever. Um, this one's interesting. I own this one as a little bit as well. Um, I'm kind of holding it here. I bought in, I think down the dip here, basically around four dollars or sorry, six dollars here. Um, and looking to keep it above six dollars, we do have a squeeze setting up a volume zone and the RSI are looking like it wants to potentially go higher. Um, so we're gonna be looking for some key targets around potentially trying to test eight dollars and 26 cents to the upside. And again, that downward support is really gonna be coming into six dollars. Um, but do but do. Oh, folks, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming out. Appreciate it. Um, MVRI. M -M what? MVIS. Wow. Very interesting. I like this one. It's holding the 21 EMA, kind of trying to make somewhat of recovery. A key point I want to look at is really kind of getting back above 650 to $7 to really get that movement higher here and potentially see that breakout higher. But that 21 EMA is basically your support in the short term to the downside. Let's see here. Guys, thank you for coming. You got, you got so many folks joining here now. Wow. Um, let's see. Let's see. I saw a lot of new people are joining. Um, 
Yeah, SPTR uh, late Thursday announced a mixed results for its new therapeutic treating a form of muscular dystrophy leading PT or tick Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's what happens with those pharmaceutical stocks. Like it, everything can be grand and fine, but then some kind of news comes out, it just can really slap it across the face. Um, Michael, we did NIO and Tesla. Let's cover NIO just real fast. We kind of covered Tesla quite a few times. So NIO. Again, they have their NIO day coming up, their conference, their little uh, uh, little show. I don't know what they call it. Um, shareholders meeting. I don't know. With that being said, um, looking for potentially, if it does continue going higher, we're looking for $57.20 um, to the target upside, really breaking above its all-time high, and then really looking for $60 to $62. Then to the downside support, initially in the short, ter short term side, it's gonna be around 50, and then back to around $47 to that level there. Um, SWBI, please. SWBI. Um, Smith and Western. Ah, the gun stuff. Okay. Um, so I guess when riots and everything happened, Smith & Western, Taser Company, gun and ammo, outdoor stuff really goes popping for whatever reason. Why are my charts all messed up for this one? That's weird. Um, interesting. Um, but that being said, that is a pretty large move higher. This usually just moves on the news. I really don't want to be... It looks like it had that move higher here from its previous, like the protesting stuff this summer. I'm initially looking for 22 15 to 23 dollars being somewhat of a topping pattern we saw kind of come in today kind of close lower nearly seven percent uh even much lower here uh, if we do see start seeing a break below 19 to uh 20 dollars we could see some substantial downside selling to around 18 dollars so be careful on that one it's, this is the very much one that kind of kind of is really just related to what's on going on in the world um, you think Halion will ever be a thing or has Nikola totally poisoned the electronic truck market? Um, yes, I do think Nikola has poisoned uh, uh, the electronic truck market without a doubt. Um, Halion, I don't know, like the, all the numbers that they put out really all seem pretty good, um, but what the company does and what the stock does is sometimes a lot of two different things and people have to disconnect from that. It might take the stock quite some time to really catch up to what the company's doing or vice versa. As of right now, the stock is really trying to get out of this downward rut here, looking to really trying to break above 19. If we do get a break above 19, we're going to be really looking for some targets around 22 to $25. So in the long run, I think, uh, uh, these place, these stocks have a place and these companies have a place, but as of right now, they have been a little bit of a neg neg negative uh, a viewpoint and stigmatism, pun intended, um, on the overall market. Because again, there's just so many of them. Like, Yeah, Halion could come back, but there's a lot of other stocks that are just doing very well as well. Um, Ed says, AMD, yes, you are speaking my kind of music. AMD, one of my longer data positions as well. Um, fantastic today, up nearly 6%. We're still in that squeeze here. We talked about it on the live stream on Sunday. It's still above $90. Really looking forward to break above 100. We want to see it above 100. So trading guns, everyone out there, let's... Uh, Let's get the the bull going here. Look, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we haven't brought this out today, but we're gonna bring out the bull and we're gonna squeeze it super hard here to really see AMD break a hundred. I don't know if it's gonna happen this week, but AMD is gonna break a hundred if it's today or tomorrow or a month from now. But AMD will break a hundred, um, hopefully. <laughs> That's what I'm betting for. Um, again, yeah, looking for a hundred dollars, really seeing a, a key level above 97 or higher, um, to the downside, 89 to $90 is going to be your level of support there. Um, KTOS. Yeah, this is the one I think you brought this up before, right, Tommy? 
Um, looking for some initial support around the 21 EMA, which is around $25. Um, and then 20, sorry, 2580 or sort of the higher 25s to lower 25s will be initial support. Even down to 2450 is going to be your little bit stronger support around the 34 EMA. But there is no squeeze set in place, but the chart looks like it wants to continue going higher. Um, this has been a pretty remarkable move in the past uh, couple weeks for this stock. So it could potentially take a break, but if we start seeing the five and eight crossing through the 21 EMA, we could see some substantial downsides uh, kind of come into play there. Um, Romo Gonzalez is docu. Yes, it's a good uh, docu. This has been one heck of a move. We're really coming out of nowhere. This stock just during the pandemic going from basically $64 all the way up to nearly $300 um, at a, this extreme level on earnings run. Um, that being said, uh, has been somewhat caught in, a, I want to say a gridlock, but just kind of trading patterns, not being able to get above $250 and kind of getting below $225 um, and extreme levels down to $200. Um, and just kind of trading in a range, really looking to potentially try to break out from this basically purgatory box that it's kind of living in. Um, huge move today, up nearly 8%, um, but it hit that Fibonacci retracement around 239. Um, if this move wants to continue into tomorrow, we really need to see it above 239 and close above 239.33 um, at least. We do have a nice little movement with the RSI and the volume zone oscillator downstairs here. Um, but again, next, if this wants to continuing higher, we're looking for 250. It's going to be in the next uh, wall that it could potentially hit. Uh, uh. I'm um, taking Kendall says, hey, Ken, uh, hello, sir. How do you pick your position size? It's usually on a, a scale of what kind of play I'm doing. If I, it's a longer term play, it's usually two or three percent of the portfolio. Um, if it's something like an options trading strategy, it's usually anywhere from a risking of uh, two to three thousand dollars on the options play depending if it's longer dated or short dated if it's really short dated It's going to come down to the lower end if it's longer dated I could pile in up to anywhere from two two to five thousand dollars on a position But if I like uh, if you're talking about like longer dated Tesla positions that that is substantially higher than my two or three percent because it just has gained so much in value and that wasn't a that wasn't a flex, but it kind of was, I guess. <laughs> um, can you talk energy jocks from Johnny Bravo? Oil is up to fifty one dollars a barrel, and the Golden Cross and the XLE hat last weekend uh, traded CVX this week, and the energy lost the money on the table. Um, so XLE is going to be what I'm be looking at here as well. Like you're talking about here, it looking like it wants to potentially try to break out here. Really looking for forty-two dollars plus here. Um, this has been again very much like a lagging uh, 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 within the stock market. Again, it's an energy section; it's not really uh, a sexy thing to talk about. Um, really looking for this potentially again. It has broken past the two hundred EMA, like you talked about. It is trying to get some kind of standard and form here to really break out. Um, with this being said, uh, let me get rid of this here and we do a quick fib here. So this was a $60 stock basically way before the pandemic and it got down to nearly lost nearly 70% of its value. Um, the next level we're going to be really looking at if this breaks above $41 to $42 is going to be $46, which we saw previously uh, at the towards of the beginning of summertime. So um, that is the 618 from the swing high to swing low for the Fibonacci retracement. So $46.30 is going to be that key target for at that level um, again. But we need to really see that break above $42. Um, but uh, let's see uh tgt target oh yes 
I missed that one. I missed that one. What a move, right? <laughs> I, I'm too busy being in Walmart. <laughs> Duh. I should have gone with Target. Um, anywho, um, really nice, strong breakout here. It was somewhat of a squeeze. It's getting a little frothy here around the 187 to 190 level. Um, we're breaking on the top levels of the RSI. Looking here at the weekly chart, we're looking at that as well, potentially kind of like, uh, not saying, hey, sell it, at, or it's gonna come crashing down, but more or less like, hey, uh, this could be a potentially kind of a, um, overhead resistance coming in through here. Um, but the, still the longer data target in mind is around 214 to 215. So another like 25 points higher. I don't know if this, this whole this whole swing is going to meet that, but it is looking fairly strong. But uh, to the downside in the short term, we're going to be looking for around 182 and then back down to 175 for support for target. But great move. Um, Lewis says CGC. Yes. Wow. This has been uh, a heck of a move with the uh, marijuana pot stocks, uh, with the the Democrats winning um, the House, uh, the Senate, and then the presidency. Um, I had this one on the radar, looking for it to break above 30. It has broken above 30. The next target, if it wants to stay above around $30 level, is going to be coming in around that $36 range. Um, and from that, that support is going to be around 26 on the stronger data support. But that initial line of resistance could be potentially down to around 28 to 28.50. Um, D Bridge says, hey, Ken, should I invest in X? R P. Oh, I can't tell you because I'm not a registered investor or a financial advisor. Um, but XRP does not pull up on anything on my screen. So I can't tell you. Yeah. Lewis, another pot stock, SNDL. Yeah, that's a that's a penny stock, right? Or just finally break out. Yeah, it's still a penny stock. Um, it looks like it wants to potentially break out and the breakout would be around 80 cents and really trying to get it back around a buck, one dollar. Um, Kevin says BS. No, oh, he means BA. Okay. Let's see here. BA. Yeah, we talked about BA. BA uh, in a weird pattern here, potentially looking to stay above $200 really in the long, in the short term here um, and really trying to get back above and get the moving averages back above the 21 MA to potentially see that level around 225. Uh, white says snow, get it, uh, snow white. So snow, wow, what a day, right? Like a crazy recovery. We just talked about this on the Discord the other day. Um, I believe it was someone was selling like a, uh, a put around the 250 range, I believe, or maybe 225 or something like that. And I was like, hey, that's like 60, 70 dollars away and you have 30, 40 days, you'll be just fine. Didn't know it's going to pop up 15, nearly uh, 15 percent or sorry, 13 and a half percent today and come up to th nearly past 300. Like <laughs> that was a great trade for him. Um, he should have bought calls. But <laughs> anyways, um, no one saw this coming unless you're doing insider trading. Um, huge amount of volume coming in today, looking for potentially a break above 306 to 307 to really get that momentum back into the groove. Since we're seeing the five and eight moving averages kind of trade sideways and going lower, we really need to see those kind of recover to kind of see how that thing uh, plays out. Um, so in general, would you, if your total portfolio is worth a hundred bucks, would you go for one or two percent per trade um sadly it's gonna be very difficult to trade a hundred dollar portfolio and just risk two to three dollars um due to the fact of um the day trading rules of uh, uh the pat the you're looking to make three round trips in a given week or a five day trading period um it's gonna be very difficult to, to follow those rules if you're trading with a smaller account sadly you're gonna have to be a little bit more loosely um with a rule potentially if you only have a hundred dollars uh in your trading account you're gonna be looking at being a little bit more on the aggressive side of maybe doing 10 to 15 percent and you have to be very careful what you pick it's, it's gonna be a very slow process and very difficult to try to trade with a hundred dollars not saying you can't do it um 
I've been testing myself and uh, I was able to take, what is this one at? I have an account, there's a little side one for my, yeah. I started with 200 and I was able to double it uh, in December. But again, the market was crazy in December, so I was able to take advantage of a couple things and I was really following the 10 to 15% rule the, uh, in that $200 account. Mm -hmm. Um, Ed says B E E M. Please, thanks. This one has come up so much, and I know I'm gonna be oh, B E E M. Um, yeah, I I I remember this one from multiple times. That people have brought this up. I'm just like, uh, like this is just painful watching this. It came down to the 21 of May. Look, I had an alert for it. Like on Monday, it came down to the 21 of May. But somehow my alert did not get triggered here. Like, look at this. How did this not get triggered? I must have. I must have put it in the following day. Um, but that's insane. Like, that would have been a great buying opportunity at that level. But um, it's holding that twenty-one EMA very well here. Um, looking like it wants to potentially try and get back above seventy to seventy-one dollars and potentially test that high there. So be careful on that one. Um. Hagan says, hey, Ken, thank you for your sharing your endless knowledge. What do you think about MRMA and plug? Plug, I love. I think plug can potentially go to 50. 50 to 52 for plug is going to be a Fibonacci number, so be careful on that potential overhead resistance. But I've been in plug since like 20 to $25, so be careful there. Um, MRNA, uh, sorry, M M A R A. Um, yeah, this thing has gone parabolic, and be very careful on this one. Overhead resistance gonna be around 27. Short term support's gonna be around 17, uh, 60. Johnny Bravo, so is there any other channel on YouTube that gives you this much personal attention? If you chat, be sure you like and subscribe. Thank you, Johnny Bravo, I appreciate it. I really do try my best here, um, but I'm not perfect because I am human. Um, we just did SNDL, I saw people talk about that. Um, Tony, yeah, GR, yeah, this is one I could not, I I, I was in this, um, but I got shooken out by it. I don't know, I have to look back on why I got out of this one. Um, this is actually one of my first uh, weed stocks that I bought, um, and this is looking really strong here, potentially trying to break above 55 to $54, but be very wary of this breakout. We could continue to see this trending higher, but it's actually fairly extended from the five and eight. So that's my only concern there. Um, and just be very mindful where this could potentially be going. Cause again, it is uh, a little bit uh, uh, escalated here, a little frothy. If I only had a thousand dollars, yeah, I, I would I would follow like the five percent rule, and I've been there. Like, I, I've traded my smaller accounts. Like, thank God I've been very fortunate and lucky. Where I, I many years ago I started out with a couple hundred bucks accounts, and I blew up those. I've I've blown up more accounts than I've had than I do have a pair of socks. Um, it's 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 embarrassing, but. You, you have to learn like it, it, I'm, a, I'm a super hard headed person. I've lost a lot of money <laughs> trying to figure out this game. Um, AAPL. Um, Apple. Apple. What a beautiful looking chart here as well. Came down to the 34 EMA here on that uh, selling off um, the last couple of days. It's showing support around that uh, 226 to 225, looking to continuously have this trend here, mindful of earnings coming out in the end of January, which again, earnings season actually kicks off, if a lot of folks don't know, pretty soon um, with the banking section. So if we go, sorry, so with Apple, we're looking to really have it stay above 228 to 230. Um, in the long run, looking to really look at and break out above 240. Um, so like the bank stocks are reporting, I believe not, is it next week? Yeah, the 19th. So we got bank stocks coming out really soon um, with reporting. Of course, 
the Bank Sox have been complete fire. Uh, they've been lit, as the kids say, um, and they are really uh, pushing higher here um, with the main factor of owning of XLF. Again, that's the sector ETF for the uh, banking stocks. With that being said, we are literally hitting the the same about the same price targets that we saw uh, pre uh, pandemic. So you can basically get cut in half within 50% and then rebound within a year, like who would have imagined? Um, but that $31.38 with longer term targets around 35 for the old uh, um, banking stock sections. Um, okay, sorry, I'm reading through all the comments. There's just so many things coming through. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what do you think about BIDU? BIDU. This is a Chinese company, right? Or, or yeah, Asian company. Um, it's looking fairly strong here, honestly. I haven't looked at this for a little bit. It's having like this really, uh, really strong moves higher here and just kind of holding that five and eight moving averages. Um, in the short term, we're really looking for support around 205 to 200. If that really breaks and we get some substantially pullback, we're going to be looking for 191 to 187 to the downside there. Um, but for the longer data targets, we're really looking to try to break its all-time highs around 227 with targets around 250 to 252. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Uh, hey, did you do Netflix yet? K Thunder, I have not done Netflix. Let's look at Netflix. Netflix, yes. This thing has been like a trading sideways. Like, I don't know if it's just due to folks not really, uh, um, all right, I'm moving on my desk, um, believing in its content here. Um, but it has really been lagging the overall market and not really getting back uh, uh showing it's got support around 500 and then down to the really lower levels around its previous move from earnings is around 486 dollars so it's going to be a pretty steep pullback if we do get there but that is some strong support but again we do have earnings coming out towards the it's actually next week the 19th so a week and a half yeah almost a, a week and a half for Netflix earnings coming out. So we could potentially get an earnings run. Um, so 5.16 to 5.15 and then potentially to 5.30. But we've seen a lot of uh, uh, overhead pressure coming in around that 5.30 level. So we could get kind of print that a little bit lower potentially. So Netflix is not my favorite stock right now. This could be a potentially nice one to sell some premium in uh, in the run up into earnings. So we'll just see about that one. Um, we did talk about lemonade. Yes, L uh, L M N D. Lemonade. What a move today, right? Twenty seven percent. If you've been in this, you are a very very happy camper um, with an insurance company. Like this is again, this is not a Tesla. They're not trying to solve world hunger here. This is an insurance company trying to make insurance easier, which is, to my opinion, God bless them. Uh, dealing with insurance companies is sometimes. It's like going to the dentist, uh, and and when you if you have bad teeth, going to the dentist. Um, with that being said, this is a crazy move higher. I have to be a little bit cautious here on a very large move higher here, um, and potentially kind of waiting for uh, some of these potentially weak hands or get some kind of pullback uh, in the overall stock here to see if the shake out some weak hands there. Um, INDX, yeah, we talked about that one a little bit as well. Um, with this one being said, 
This has been a former runner. You can you saw that towards the end of May here, and then of course you saw it again here in November, and now we're seeing it here in January. Um, can it continue here? Sure, maybe not. Um, looks like an after hours trading, it got up to nearly the $3.30 range, which is a key level that we're looking for. Um, and if it doesn't, doesn't hold above that, we could be looking for some downward support, basically coming in around $2.40 and then $2.00. Um, and then some key levels to the upside around four dollars and then four eighty four. Um, I didn't hear about the Apple talks, but people have talked about that in the chat here earlier. I uh, brought it to my attention with the Hyundai. Um, um, Ramon, God, uh, Intel, yeah, Intel. Interesting one as well. This one has <laughs> very much so has been somewhat of a, a beaten down horse here and has not really shown much love here. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I forget the the an activist investor basically said, hey, you guys are doing a crappy job here. Um, we need some change here and we need to get this uh, horse back on the road and uh, start printing some money here. Um, we are do have some potential overhead resistance around $52.28. We've seen here kind of top here once, twice, maybe three times. Um, but then if that really wants to break out and this momentum to continue, we're gonna be looking for $55. With that also being said, we have that ongoing support uh, or sorry, uh, earnings coming out on the 21st as well. So we could get a potential earnings run and we could get some potentially uh, good news going forth uh, with the old uh, Intel going there. Of course, this was a former large stock holding that I had way, 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 way back when. Let me just go down memory lane real fast. I'm going to go to the monthly chart. This is one of my first stocks that I own because, again, I was a very large uh, a or a Intel person on my gaming rigs, which I still am. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's like I owned it around like twenty dollars. Yeah, that was one of my first largest position. I was like, I was like, yeah, it's got a great dividend. I'm gonna hold it forever. I held it for like maybe a year. <laughs> Until I got bored and I saw the next shiny light over there. Um, ba -do -ba -do. um Tesla released a real wheel drive model Y available in store. Really? Interesting. Really? Let's go buy a Tesla. Or pretend to. Model Y order. I don't see it. Oh, that is okay. Real world. Okay, only 37. Okay, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Still, oh, it's after. Okay, this is after the savings. Okay, it's still 41. Was it always 41,000? Interesting. Anywho. Uh, we did NIO, but we can look at ARC. Of course, ARC is a great, ARC K fund, the innovation fund, is a great fund to own if you don't want to be a bag holder of some of like the Roku's, the Squares, and the Teslas of the world. You can just buy ARC ETF and have a small percentage of that and really potentially get that volatility um, and that uh, return with less potential risk. With that being said, ARC at all-time highs again. Um, this one being said, really strong performance from Kathy Wood and her folks over there. Really looking for the next target to be around 150 and the next FIB number to be around 160 uh, up there looking at those targets. With that being said, we have some strong support around the 21 EMA, around 125, and then around 121 as well for support down there. If Intel would spin out their self-driving unit, they could capitalize on the whole EV hype. Yeah, they could, without a doubt.
What's a good stock for trade next week? Uh, I don't trade on a weekly basis. I'm usually looking down at least 30 to 45 days for tr options trades, but uh, yeah. Um, I love, I love uh, sadly, TSM has taken off like to, it's gone past the moon. It's kind of heading to its way to Saturn here. Um, but this one is definitely uh, a very aggressive move higher. Uh, my only concern is like we talked about initially, it does have earnings coming up, so I have to be super, super careful and mindful of that. With that being said, AMD um, is one of the stocks that I love as well, and it still has not potentially broken out yet, I'm doing air quotes, if I don't know if you can see that, um, around $90 to $80. We really potentially, uh, if this momentum continues, um, $100 is in the cards for AMD without a doubt, I believe. Do you feel fundamentals are out the window with the current Fed support? Um, fundamentals in what way? I think they are completely shredding up the book about quantitative easing and stimulus stuff and just holding the market together with duct tape. Sure. Um, but I think they did very drastic things to really not have... Um, not the same amplitude of 07 and 08 repeat, but I think they just did everything in their power to not see the same suffering that a lot of people went through, even though a lot of suffering has still happening, still going on. But we will see the consequences usually years later. So we'll see on how that plays out. She's our generation Warren Buffett's. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great way to put it. Johnny Bravo says asking E V R I. Oh, that's an interesting one. Um, what do they do here, Johnny? Um, looking for again some more consolidation here. If it stays above twelve fifty, even twelve dollars, the trend is still somewhat intact. Um, but it's looking like it has its it's coming coming into fruition from its previous highs that it had pre the pandemic here. Um, and maybe some weak bag bag holders are just getting out of it um, to maybe trade this sideways a little bit. But um, with no earnings in the horizon, we could potentially see this stay above twelve uh, forty two to twelve dollars. And potentially try to test uh, that fourteen to fifteen dollars. Um, GHIV. We just want that one to continuously stay above the twenty-one EMA, um, and then Frog. Uh, yeah. Frog is one that has been slightly coming back here, kind of like Big C. They are both kind of trading sideways. They're both kind of somewhat newer IPOs. Both, I don't think a lot of people know too much about, um, but I think they're somewhat undervalued in the sense of overlooked rather than undervalued here. Um, looking for basically it to hold $60 range here. If we do get any of this kind of like really steep uh we really want to see this base building and really stay above and potentially test that 65 to 60 dollar level to really potentially see this one kind of come back swinging here and really seeing some potential to uh, kick higher Um, I don't know Janet Yellen uh, personally, but she seems like she knows what she's doing, I believe. Um, since you love AMD, I have a position in uh, NVIDIA as well, but I have a larger position in AMD though. Um, I like AMD more if you had, a, had, had me choose between the two which I kind of did choose because I have more money in AMD than I have in NVIDIA.
Uh, do, do, do. What do you think about DD? I like double Ds. What? Oh. Uh, do point. Wow. Holy. What? Are they getting acquired? Are they buying some? What's going on? What the hell? What the heck is this? Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic move for them, for DuPont. That's fan. That's a crazy move. <laughs> this is insane. Good for them, yeah. Wow, yeah. Looking for basically $82 to $85, the next targets. But this has moved up pretty steadily here. So if you're in it, I love you. Fantastic. Take a little bit off the table, potentially, if, if that's part of your trading plan. But yeah. I can't buy this unless it kind of at least comes down to the $74 to $75 level. Someone said FireEye, I saw that came whizzing by. So FireEye, yeah, this thing had, of course, I don't know, like, I left so much money on the table for this one. Um, of course, you got hacked, um, they went down, and then they just skyrocketed up and recovered substantially stronger than the, where they were um, by a lot, honestly. Uh, I think it really got their, them on the table here. Looking for some initial resistance around $21 to the downside for support, and then even down to $19 to $20 even as well. But really looking for $24.95, basically $25 to really get back above to those levels there. KLR. Interesting chart. Not really sticking out too much. It is holding the 21 EMA to 34 EMA to continue to climb up. Really looking for some overhead resistance around $10. You can see multiple spike ups there and just really kind of hit in that wall of resistance there. But yeah, nothing to really write home there. Again, I don't know what the company does, but it looks like it had a huge downward trend. Now it's really trying to get break out of that and really kind of kick higher here. Jake, we did QS. Uh, QS has been a heck of a ride for me to end of last year into this year. Looking for, again, this to kind of stay above uh, 50 to $52 and kind of hold that level, um, that position there to really see if we can stay above that level. Um, NIO, we can do NIO one more time, probably do it two more times before I get out of here. Um, with that being said, NIO, they got their big day coming up. A lot of people are getting psyched about it. People placing their bets. Um, people are some, a lot of expirations are looking at 60 to $62 potentially to the upside. To the downside, we're looking for some support around 50 to around $45. So be careful on that one as well. Uh, There's a third row seat in the Model Y too. Are you serious? How do you, is it, is it you have to sit backwards in it? Excuse me. Um, uh, P-A-C-B, uh, yeah. Wow, what a move here. Nice move as well. It had a nice little breakout here around 30. Just took that to all time high, wow. Again, this thing has is known to kind of have these large jolts higher and then kind of settle back down. Um, again, looking for potentially that holding hat here and maybe just kind of trading sideways potentially and kind of waiting for the moving averages to kind of catch up here. But again, it's a pharmaceutical stock, so they have uh, um, a lot of uh, potential uh, momentum uh, within the stock on any kind of news. Um, CRSP, CRSP, blue, wow. Oh, like these genomics biopharmaceutical companies are just taking off here. This is insane. Um, breaking out to all time high, looking like it hit the uh, so, uh, Fibonacci retracement here at, at 197, basically looking to potentially test 200. Um, usually with a move higher like this, uh, we could be seeing some profit taking potentially, who knows, um, but yeah, that is a great move if you're in that there, my friend. Good job, Blue. 
um, S E S N S E S N. Um, yeah, this is not really my wheelhouse. It's a penny stock. Sorry, my friend. Is crowd a good play for calls? If I remember right, it's a little, if I'm thinking the right thing, it, it, it's kind of thin, I believe. It's a little, oh, wow, look at this one. The January 22s have a lot of calls at six. Let me see what they got for February. Yeah, it's not bad. Actually, it is terrible, actually. Look how, look how wide these spreads are. The in the money stuff's okay, but it's still too much even for in the money. There's the spreads are too wide for me with them. Again, you, you're a free person, you can do whatever the heck you want, but uh, they're a little too wide. Again, we'll see how the market opens up, but those are pretty large uh, gaps in between the bid and the ask. A lot of slippage can happen there, if you know what I mean. Um, not sure if you can do CLSK. Yes. Nice move for that one as well today. Huge move here with, again, the overall market was just fantastic for, for a lot of folks today, especially for a lot of stuff I'd had on. And uh, this one really <laughs> kicking higher here. Staying above that $30 range is going to be the first level of downward support. Um, with that being said, some stronger support around 25. That being said, that 42, so 45 to 50 dollars is going to be the next target to the upsides for this one. But this again has been very large moves higher. A little extended here, potentially looking for some consolidation, maybe even a slight pullback for some profit taking, and maybe getting some entries lined up there as well. Um, LSPD. Wow, light speed. Okay, this is a a very nice looking chart as well. Uh, it's hit that 21 EMA twice now, and it's looking to continue riding higher here. Looking to try to break above 75 with some key targets around 75. Let's go here. Let's look at the fibs. Yeah, so breaks 71. So we're looking for 80 to 83 dollars to the upside if the next target is. If we do get that substantial volume higher above $71 there. Um, and then, yeah, looks like a lot of folks have got their answers, questions answered. Guys, gals, thank you so much. If you do, before uh, we sign off here, if you don't mind hitting the like button and subscribing. And as well, if you're interested, we have the uh, some links down below if you wanna look at some books. I'm gonna be adding more books into the Amazon store there if you're interested in checking out that. And we have an affiliate link for Tastyworks. Um, if you open up an account today, I think they do 100 free shares or 10 free call options if you open up an account of 2K or more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate everyone coming out and watching this live stream on a Thursday and taking the time out of your night, evening and spending it with me here. Um, it's definitely uh, been a lot of fun with a lot of questions. Oh, we got a couple more. Tony says, um, APHA, thoughts on tomorrow? Um, so I'll be straight with you, Tony. I have calls on that one going out to leaps of next year. And I think there are around, yeah, there. I think there are the 14, yeah, the 14, $15 leaps uh, going out for this one. I think this, this one could definitely run higher. Um, it does have earnings coming out next week. Again, since I own the longer dated leaps, this is gonna be something I'm gonna be looking at um, and really potentially um, seeing this really come into fruition. Um, uh, BCHD says, Ali, BC. Um, grayscale, Bitcoin Cash. I don't know what this Bitcoin Cash. Uh, 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 okay, this is a grayscale ETF fund. Okay. Um, this one being said, um, really looking for this to kind of stay above 34, potentially testing the high of around 50 to $55. Really hard to kind of see because you kind of see these wave kind of choppy pattern here. So that's really what's kind of coming into fruition there. 
Thank you, Trevor. I think thank you, Trevor. Thank you, man. Thank you guys so 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 much for coming out. Is BA or SQ a good option? I like them both. Uh, BA has great support around two hundred dollars, and SQ looks like it wants to potentially test two fifty. Um, but it has strong support where I sold some puts at around 215 to 210. All right, guys, thank you for that one. We're going to be signing off here. Uh, definitely love to see you guys in the Discord. Hopefully to see you in the next live stream. And again, don't forget to hit that thumbs on the way out the door. All right, guys, have a great and wonderful evening, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.